that's the, that's the gateway to the galaxy. Well, at least the solar system. <laughs> hey, this is Warren Redlick. Elon Musk spoke yesterday in a audio interview at the Humans to Mars Summit. I put his voice behind video of him speaking at another event just to make it more presentable. I want to show you some things that he said that relate to the development of Starship and to people traveling to Mars. Very exciting stuff. I think you're really going to enjoy this. He talks about going to Mars. He talks about the development of Starship and also the development of Super Heavy. He revealed some really important details about the Super Heavy booster. And let's get into it. I'm going to show you some bits and let's have some fun. I think given enough time, we'll, uh, space will get to Mars. The question is how long it's going to take us. Um, and then getting to Mars, I think, it's not the fundamental issue. Fundamental issue is uh, building a, a base, building a city on Mars that is self-sustaining such that if the ships from Earth ever stop coming, that the, the Mars city doesn't die out. That, that's a real tough threshold. If you follow Elon Musk talking about Mars, this isn't necessarily new. This is simply Elon restating the vision maybe a little more clearly than he stated it before. If you haven't heard it before, this is great stuff. Coming up, he's going to go into a lot more detail on Starship development which I think is the bigger part of the story. But this was the Humans to Mars Summit, so it's not surprising he talked about Mars quite a bit, and he was asked about Mars quite a bit. Let's hear some more about Mars, and then we're going to move on to Starship. We're going to go, and we're going to build a propellant plant and uh, initial Mars base and Mars base Alpha, and then we got to build a city and get it to the point where it's self-sustaining. Um, and I, was, I want to emphasize this is a very hard and dangerous difficult thing. Not, not for the pain of art. You know, so a uh, good chance you'll die. Um, and it's going to be tough, tough going. And, uh, but it'd be pretty glorious if it works out. Elon also went into some depth about refueling, how Starship would launch into orbit and then tank it would be arrive in orbit empty, basically, of fuel. And tankers would be flown up to refuel Starship so it would have a full load, a full tank, but it would be able to go to the moon Mars. If you want to get to Mars, you got to do the orbital refilling. And most of what you're doing is, is putting oxygen up there because the, the propellant is uh, about 78% oxygen, 22% fuel. You know, if you want to get long range on, on an aircraft, like super long range, you do aerial refueling. Well, well uh, it's kind of like that, but in orbit. And, and so you, you can basically put the ship in orbit with a, a 100 to 150 tons of, of cargo. Um, but the, the, the propellant tanks are essentially empty by the time it gets to orbit. And then you set it up and you, you, you fill up the tanks with uh, with dedicated uh, tanker missions. Um, and then that means you can depart from Earth orbit with fully loaded tanks. Um, so um, depending on how far you, you're going, you, could, you, you have a lot of delta B to get, get places. Um, and, and currently the, the tanks do about hundred tons, but we could obviously stretch that and make it, you know, two thousand tons if needed. Um, so you can really go go far with that ship. Um, you know, I think we can get the non-cargo portion of the ship mass well under a hundred tons uh, over time, and then uh, let's say you got a you know, uh, something on the order of a hundred tons of of uh, cargo. Um, and if you want to go, like, if you want to go far, you put less cargo on, obviously. Like, if you want to go really far, you just go, like, maybe you have, like, an 80-ton ship and uh, 40 tons of cargo or something like that. Um, and, and then stretch the tanks, uh, maybe 2,000 tons per pound. Then you, then you, you can easily go to the surface of Mars and the surface of the moon and back, you know, no problem, without having to have a little deep on the moon. Okay, now we're going to get deep into Starship. A lot of details, how many engines Super Heavy is going to have, a lot more. Get ready, here we go. We're starting construction booster this week of booster prototype one. We might have fewer than 31 engines on the booster. I'll try to simplify the configuration. So it might be 28 engines. There's still, still a lot of engines. We're, we're, we're making good progress. The thing that re really needs to make progress on with Starship is the production system. Making a prototype is one thing 
is you know, I think relatively easy. Uh, like in my view, that the idea of something is for you know, frankly, the very easy part, and then a prototype is like the sort of initial manifestation of that idea. Also, relatively easy. But building the production system so you can we can build ultimately hundreds or thousands of starships. That's the the hard part. But we're making good progress on that production system, as you can people can see from like aerial photos of Chica. You know, that uh, a year ago there was nothing there, and and now we've got um, you know quite a lot of production capability. So we're we ra- rapidly making more and more ships, and we'll be starting construction booster this week of uh, booster prototype one. So it's it's really scaling up the production system with the actual hard part, and we're making progress in that. So that's what I'm most excited about. Next, Elon gets into the specific configuration of engines on Super Heavy. Really fascinating. We might have fewer than 31 engines on the booster because we're trying to simplify the configuration. So it might be 28 engines. There's still still a lot of engines. It will also end up cranking up the thrust on the engines. You know, I think probably long term, the the outer row of engines, the the, the, the 20 engines that are purely... um, Foot thrust, but the don't gimbal that are steer. Um, I mean, I think those probably probably end up like you know, well, well over 250 ton thrust, uh, maybe 300. Well, I got a little more excited about this than usual, and I made my own rendering, my own image of what I think the 28 engine super heavy booster might look like in terms of the engine configuration. I took a previous 37 booster version and then i took circles the exact same size size of the the booster itself the inner gimbaled area and the engines themselves are all circles and i just made circles the same sizes and i was actually able to squeeze 20 engines around the outside of the booster and then squeeze eight engines into the gimbaling area in the center this is going to come up Eight of the engines, as Elon described it, would gimbal, which means they move, and the outer engines would be fixed. They would not move, uh, change angle. So the gimbaling engines can change angle, and that helps the ship change its uh, its uh, yaw, pitch, whatever, to keep it straight up or get it in the right position. Where the thrust engines, these are those engines are more powerful, and I thought putting them on the outside puts them closer to the steel cylindrical structure and maybe that makes sense maybe it makes more sense to have some of them interior and some of them exterior i don't know and keep in mind the bells on the engines for the booster will be smaller in diameter because they are sea level optimized he talks about that at some point in the interview that for sea level you have smaller bells and for vacuum because there's no air pressure to compress the stream of gas coming out you have to have a different shaped bell, which is larger. That's what I rendered. That's what I tried to show here in this picture. Yeah. So when you're when you're in in orbit to vacuum, um, then you want to have you want to have a big nozzle so you can point the gas. Um, so so, that, so that, that big nozzle can essentially straighten out the gas that is being shot at high speed by the engine and. And, and you can have more of momentum transfer be forward um, in the direction that you want. Um, if you're if you're in back, if you're in sea level, you've got sort of the atmosphere is kind of truncating. You, you can't really the you know, atmosphere is sort of keeping your, your your plume kind of together, and uh, you can't really have a big nozzle um, in the dense atmosphere because the um, you get close separation. Around the, you know the the inside of the nozzle, um, the basically atmosphere starts creeping up inside your no- nozzle, and uh, the, the engine just shakes like crazy and, and wants to kind of come apart. Um, but anyway, um, in 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 vacuum and and microgravity, you, you want big nozzles. And that's that's what we want to try to get to over time. Uh, you know, a, a 380 second ISP, maybe a little better, uh, which can be done with. Uh, uh, methane in a um, high combustion efficiency, high pressure methane engine with a big nozzle. Also, Elon said that they were going from six legs to four legs, and the legs would be 
bigger or stand out wider to give a wider stance. He said that in a tweet, so I reflected that in my image that I created here. When do you expect the first orbital flight to LEO and re-entry of Starship? Probably next year. But I, I hope we do a lot of flights. Um, yeah, I don't, it's not, the first ones might not work. You know, they, this is uncharted territory. Nobody's ever made a fully reusable orbital rocket. Uh, so, you know, just having that at all is, is pretty significant. And then having something that's twice the size of Saturn V, that's also fully reusable. Um, and has better total sort of delta B efficiency when factoring in uh, mass ratio and um, ISP. That's really something else. That's profound. That's the, that's the gateway to the galaxy. Well, at least the solar system. <laughs> if we demonstrate success of Starship, then then I actually can start thinking seriously about a, a lunar base, you know, moon base alpha, and. Um, you know, but in order to have a real base, you need serious cargo. Um, you know, serious cargo down, and you don't need to have as much cargo back because, you know, once you be taken back, it's just kind of people and, you know, some moon rock samples. But uh, for, for mass down to the surface of the moon, you need a lot of that, you know, hundreds of tons, maybe thousands of tons. So, you know, Starship, um, yeah, you know, it's the only thing. Uh, that can do that. Well, how much of the uh, the crew habitat, life support, uh, research and development is complete for Starship? Not much because we've got to just make the thing work and automatically, you know, yeah. delivering satellites, you know, do hundreds of missions, I think, with satellites before we put people on board. Um, but obviously, we know how to make a complex life support system that can deal with a wide range of environments, uh, you know, you know, ch changing atmospheric pressure, changing the oxygen and nitrogen percentage in the in the air, and um, you know, obviously we've made spacesuits that are capable of taking um, you know, total vacuum depressurization. So, you know, uh, and in terms of like filtering out CO two and you know other stuff that people breathe, like farts and stuff. <laughs> um, you know how to do that. Um, for a longer mission, like if you go to Mars, you'll want to have a, a more renewable system than, than what we already have in Crew Dragon. Uh, you, you know, you'd want to recycle things, you know, uh, recycle water a lot more um, and oxygen a lot more. But, you know, if we're going to the moon, no problem. What do you think is the biggest challenge of a million people on Mars? What matters is, is the getting the cost per ton to the surface of Mars as low as possible. It needs to be low enough to the point where uh, some combination of individuals and governments can afford to send that level of tonnage to the surface of Mars. And, and when, when the affordability, the intersection of affordability and desire <laughs> gets to, let's say, a million people, then we will, that's when you get critical mass and you have a, a you know, you're a multi-planet civilization. So we got to try to get to, get, I don't know, a million tons to the surface of Mars as soon as possible um, before something, you know, before we do something down to ourselves or there's like a big meteor or some super volcano or who knows what. The last thing in this video, Elon goes into a really in-depth description of how the Raptor engine works. Um, I've heard it before. Some of you have probably heard it before. He, he gives a different take on it. There's a great video by Everyday Astronaut where he breaks down the Raptor engine. That is much more visual and a really great explanation. But Elon gives this really in-depth explanation. I didn't want to take it out, but I put it to the end because it's not for everyone. So if you like hearing that stuff, listen up. Well, let's see. The Raptors are it's a, a stage combustion engine, uh, which means that the uh, propellant is uh, pre-combusted initially and then um, uh, in, 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 simultaneously pre-combusted in an oxygen-rich uh, turbine and a and separately a fuel-rich uh, turbine. Um, and um, so you've got the um, oxygen-rich turbine driving the, the oxygen uh, turbo pump and uh, the fuel-rich turbine driving the fuel-rich turbo pump. Um, these, these are at very high pressure. Um, 
In, in fact, at the, when we took the took Raptor to a chamber pressure of 330 bar recently, uh, we got almost 1100 bar uh, upstream. So that was pretty intense. I think about 1070 maybe, but, but just under 1100 bar, which is pretty bonkers. Um, a bar is one atmosphere. So, um, and so, and, and then you've got a fuel-rich gas and an oxygen-rich gas that go through the main injector uh, through through a whole bunch of elements, um, and that uh, you know they, they mix in, the, in those elements and they combust in the main chamber, go through the throat, and we have the spray hot, very fast hot gas, and then you've got that uh, bell nozzle, and the, the nozzle uh, has something called like a round, round contour, um, which is uh, basically intended to turn the gas, so so the gas shoots out straight. So there's you know, you, you want to really say, okay, um, how fast is this gas moving and uh, how much of it is going out uh, directly backwards? Um, that, that's kind of what sets the, you know, how good a rocket engine is. Um, so, you know, specific impulses, like, like kind of how, how fast is that gas moving? Um, and the rocket equation is very simple. It's like... Um, you know, it's it's basically the effective exhaust velocity times the log of the uh, start to uh, end mass ratio. So, which really just means how fast are you shooting gas out the end, and what percentage of your rocket is propellant. Um, so, um, from a physics standpoint, a um, gas gas stage combustion, you know, full flow engine is the uh, the but it's the architecture with the highest potential um, capability. So if this was like gymnastics, you know, but like what's the hardest trick you can do? You know, like you get graded on on like how well you do with and the difficulty of your trick sort of thing. So this this is like definitely the A plus uh, architecture. Um, and then um, as we gradually improve it, we, we we then kind of like we'll get a grade within that architecture, and we're, we're you know progressing pretty well. Um, I, I could see it, but like one, I like it's not, it's not actually out of the question that we could get, for example, a thrust to weight of 200, um, in the, the thrust optimized version of Raptor, which would be even more than Merlin, which currently has the record for th uh, thrust to weight of an engine. So the thrust rate of 200 would mean that it, the engine can lift 200 times its own weight. Um, which I the realm of possibility. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. Check out some of my other videos. There's merchandise below the description below. And in the description below, you can find out about my sponsor. You can find out about merch. Uh, you can find out about my Patreon. Please support me on Patreon. Thanks very much for watching.